Hello, Jamie. Hello, everyone. Hello, Eric. How are you doing? Hi, Lisa. Eric says hi and hi to everyone. Doing good on this end, trying to get Eric straightened out so that he doesn't mess with our technology anymore. Yeah, he already did. He messed with my the volume of my voice. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right, Eric. Keep it keep it straight. Okay. I don't want to have to put you in timeout. All right. We are going to continue about uh, the uh, on the topic of abuse. First question, why do people choose to be abused and uh, the abuser? Why do people, some people choose to be the abused and some people choose to be the abuser? And this includes domestic violence, childhood abuse, sexual abuse, etc. Uh, he did a very wrong thing, in my opinion, but he got up close and he goes, because abuse is fun. Oh, yeah, right. I hope you're being sarcastic completely sarcastic but he says these are ways that we can understand relationships so they are contracts that are set up before you come into the life to what role you will play for a particular relationship because you can have a relationship where you're not an abusee or abuser it's a very balanced relationship and then you go home to your spouse and you're a complete you're a complete dick to them and he said, so a lot of times you'll find that the contracts people, humans, sign up for is they are they're a dick for one person, but not the other. Okay, so that's, that's the first hint that, <clears throat> the first hint that, um, that there's a contract. Otherwise, if they were that way, they'd be the same to everybody. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. If so you have a specific contract with one person. Yes. If they're the same to every single person in their life, child, friend, family, so forth, then this is the personality that they signed up for. This is something that they have to work through and work over. But when you notice that it's just to one person and not the others, you can identify that it's a contract. And it's, it's even if you're being the biggest asshole on the face of the earth to this person, it is a gift to them because it is obviously something it is obviously something that they need to be learning or need to have in their life to go through. And um, I said, you just gave so many people an excuse to be an asshole. Oh, no. <laughs> and he goes, no, no, not like that. He goes, I don't mean that you have the right just to explode to a person and go, hey, that's your gift. Learn how to deal with it. He says, I'm talking about relationships that are intimate. I'm not talking about yelling at someone because they took your cab or you know, being upset with someone because they cut you in line. He goes, that's personality traits. Then you're just really just being a dick and you need to, you know, address yourself because, hell, if you're going to go through life like that, you're going to miss a lot of beautiful moments. You know, take it easy. Uh, he's going back to being in the contract for someone. And he said this abuse can show up in many different ways. It could be verbal abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse and he says I, I know that's horrible is nobody really looks at these qualities and say hey I need this in my life I would love to learn you know <laughs> oh what do you learn from uh, of course yeah from being abused that, was that next that one? was my next question he says well you learn boundaries you learn better communication he goes, but immediately, before any of this abuse happens, you learn how to identify your own emotions, right? So you have this internal head versus heart game because you'll have, even if you're a kid, they know when they're uncomfortable. They know when they're in the wrong place. They have this instinct. But yet, normally what happens is the adult in the situation will talk them out of the instinct. Oh, you're fine. Stay put. Don't say anything to anyone because I'll, you know, hurt you or I'll do this. And they continue the abuse pattern. And he said it's a lesson for you to acknowledge your purest instinct and emotion in that moment. Honor it and follow through it. Follow through with it. And he said if you don't, then you're signing up for the abuse. You're saying I can handle it. Nobody else can, but I can. So I'm going to stay put. And he says, you know, not so cool. Because if you can learn what that first instinct is, 
then you are learning the lesson for what the abuse would have taught you. Sometimes people do have to be kind of beaten down. They have to have that six year abusive relationship or 10 years or 20. They have to feel so paralyzed that they cannot leave. But yet when they do follow through, whether it's a week later or 10 years later, they needed that length of time to feel suppressed so that the life that follows it is is not suppressed. It's almost on s spiritual warp speed. Spiritual <coughs> warp speed. Say that one fast. Spiritual warp speed. Pretty good. He, Anything else on that? No, he, he was saying that he, he pretty much signed up for self-abuse. Not at all. Uh -huh. Not abuse uh -oh. with others. Yes. Oh, what about the abuser? What What are they here to learn? If anything, that's sad. He says, "Now oh, people are going to think I'm fucked up, but it is way harder to be the abuser than the abusee. The abusee has more control over the situation. You know, they can choose to leave, remove themselves." at whatever point you know and he goes i know if we're talking about hostage situations and and you know he's like i'm just speaking general so don't get your, your panties in a wad oh god eric he says but the abusee has more power and more strength than the abuser even though the abuser is showing the strength you know they're, they're using the physical body and the words to kind of trump or overpower but it, it's all false right so mm -hmm. I'm saying that it's harder to be the abuser because of the warpness of the energy that they have to sign up for it is extremely hard to heal through I'm not saying that being a victim of any of this is not difficult I know that it is but I also know that a victim or an abusee has way more strength and power to mend and self-heal than an abuser. Why did they choose that, though? Well, what's in it for them? What did they come? Why did they come here as an abuser? He says, "I know a lot of people would like to think that it is evil, negative." <laughs> He does air quotes, some demonic thing to come in to really be rooted as an asshole. But in many cases, it's a sacrifice. In, in many cases, the actual soul in the person is not this way whatsoever. When they die and you see them in spirit and you hear what they've done on earth, completely different kinds of energies. So it was a sacrifice to be the role, to create chaos, so that joy and healing can come from it, so that lessons can be learned. So it's like they take a hit. In order to help the abusee, the abused. And other people who hear the story, who experience Eric, the story. Eric, stop it. What? Eric is messing with it. I hear a high-pitched scream and some... I don't know when you're not talking. Talk. Let's see. Hi. <laughs> oh, good. Thank God. Eric, stop it for the love of God. Quit messing. He's been doing a lot of messing on my radio interviews, too. Really? Oh, I'm, God, it's awful. I'm tired of buying new equipment thinking that my equipment's broken. I know. Send him the bill. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if they could pay for the Yeah. Bill? <laughs> Just uh, manifest some C notes for us. Yeah. Okay. How can people recover from abuse, including childhood abuse? So recover from the abuse. He said, are we talking about that from the abusee? Yeah, how can they recover? Well, we can do both. First, the abused. Okay. Um, he says it's going to be similar to part one where we talked about being uncentered, ungrounded. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it has to do, a lot of the healing has to do with when you're looking at the mind, body, emotional, soul, mm -hmm. is that you look, why did you give your power away? 
mentally, why did you give in and believe that the other person had more control or that they were smarter, better, and you had to give in to it? You know, emotionally, why didn't you pay attention to what you were feeling before all of this even started when you realized you were hesitating or you were uncomfortable? You know, physically, why didn't you listen to your instinct where it said to run or to leave, but yet, you know, you collapsed, gave in, stayed put? And, and spiritually, he says, you have to look at that. Why did you surrender your, your, your confidence, your power? He keeps using those two words. Those are his two favorite words when it comes to an abusee. And, and even if it's a, and a victim, like being attacked, like being mugged. And mm -hmm. he says, all of these little things happen in your life for you to learn a lesson from. And he says, and people have to understand that when it's over and that they're okay, they're physically okay, they're mentally okay, they still have all their bits and pieces, that they can choose to live their life right, right from then and there as a happy, healthy person. But yet, dealing with trauma in human beings is an interesting, you know, delicate subject. Mom, as you know, like... PSD, PS, what's PSD, PTS? Oh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Oh, PTSD, mm -hmm. like rattling off in initials, letters. <laughs> and he <laughs> says, this is hard because we're trained as a human being to associate more to the negative so that we avoid it, so that we can have a higher survival rate. It's actually a bullshit technique if we stay more with the positive in the now and in the joy, we have a higher success rate. But somewhere our culture and our society taught us when the big dinosaurs were coming out or when the war was happening on the plains, you know, and we had to look at what mistakes did we make and don't make those mistakes again. We were not trained to look at where are we and how do we better ourselves from here. We were trained to focus on the mistakes. So what happens is the way our brain will work is constantly bring up the negative or constantly bring up the, the victim, the hurt, the abuse, and not be able to let go of it, but yet we had no control over it to begin with. We had no control over it to begin with, therefore we can't rewire it to make it okay. So you have to learn how to let go of it, realize that you're healthy and happy right where you are and move on from there. For the abuser, um, it depends on what kind of abuse. Um, if they were just a single soul, single soul abuser, what does that mean? Oh, single contract abuser, just for one person, but not for the others, then they can do therapy on that and work on it. But if they signed up for that personality and they were that way the whole time, he says, really, really the only out is going to be death. Oh, I mean, that's so fun. Or maybe it is. <laughs> this is what he said. <laughs> it is, actually. It's it's the relief of knowing that you've played your role, you've played your part. Wow. He's going down all kinds of crazy things. Um, the death would have to come naturally or by their own hands. If it's death, like, um, uh, by by someone murdering them... <laughs> Well, that actually could be the right thing, but, um, you know, when you're in jail and you get sentenced to death? Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, Execu execution? execution. That he doesn't believe in. Oh, yeah. So, what's that? Wheeling. Hey, Eric, oh, my God. Okay. All right, so anything else on that before we close? Nope, he says that's it. All right, well, thank you, guys. Appreciate your help. Thank you, Eric. Until next time. Kissing. Is that Thank what he's you, doing? everyone. Yes, he's being really silly. After just talking right. about something so heavy, he can turn on a dime. It's just, what? He's saying right bye, now. everyone. Thank you. All right. All right, so if you all want to find out more about Jamie Butler, then go to her site, withloveandlight.com. And A-N-D is, is how you, you spell it all out, and... And then head over to Channeling Eric, Eric spelt with a K, E-R-I-K, and definitely start at the beginning of the archives. By the way, uh, Jamie has so many upcoming events, you need to check out her calendar. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. You're making me blush. Stop. Okay.
everyone have a great day. Eric saying thank you and we'll see you for part three.